Welcome back to the channel. If you guys would like to see no less than 20 different 6.5 millimeter projectiles fit into the various seating stems of the Hornaday, Lee, and Forrester bullet seating dies in 6.5 Creedmoor, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you want to learn what loads work best for me, the tools that I use to make my groups smaller, subscribe to the channel and leave your feedback in the comment section to help me and the rest of the community here improve our load development. In this week's video, we'll be looking at the various seating stems for the Hornaday, Lee, and Forrester bullet seating dies. So guys, if you're a fan of the channel, you might have already seen my 6.5 Creedmoor die comparison video talking about the entire die sets, the Lee versus the Hornaday. If you haven't, I'll put a card up so you guys can go take a look at that. But today, we're strictly talking about bullet seating. If you guys have seen that video, you're going to know that I only talked about the Hornaday and Lee die sets. And what you see on the table now is one by Forrester. Going through the various videos that I've made, if you guys are fans of channels, you know that I've shot a whole lot of different projectiles. There's still more to test, guys. Don't worry, more is on the way. However, I've been trying to find another way to possibly get my loads to improve, test some different projectiles, test some different combinations, and frankly, I just thought it was the right time to try out this Forrester die. The Forrester is a little bit different than the other die. I have broke it down. If you guys want to see a quick video on that, let me know in the comments section and maybe I'll do a quick tearing apart of the die. But in this particular video, guys, we're talking all about bullets and we're talking all about seating stems. Like I promised in the intro, we're going to go over 20 different projectiles here. So let's kind of start it out. I'll say that I'm sure this video is going to offend a couple people, especially the Lee fans out there. Feel free, guys, to draw your own conclusions. I'm not endorsing any one particular die over another. Some of the projectiles that I've loaded on this channel have had little rings around the tips, and frankly, that's just not something we wanted, so we're really looking for the best seating die that we can do that does the least physical damage to the projectiles as possible and gives us the most concentric rounds as possible. Let's start right off, guys. These are going to be in alphabetical order. I'll probably put a list down in the description, and the alphabet we're going to go by from weight lowest to highest. These are the 20 projectiles that I have on hand to do this test. So if your favorite projectile is not included, I apologize, but this is everything that literally that I've had on my shelf right now. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The, uh, I'm just gonna put quick flashes across the screen. You guys can pause the video anytime you want. The constant thing they're going through here, you're going to see five different options. On the far left is going to be the Lee. The second one from the left is going to be what I'm going to refer to as the Hornady Standard. So if you buy the custom grade die set, that is the standard seating stem that comes in that die set. Now, just because a Forester is a little bit different of a stem, I put that one in the center. So all the ones that you're going to see are going to have the Forester, but obviously all these pictures should be labeled. So hopefully they should be clear as day so you guys can understand. The next one you're going to see is the Hornady AMAX stem. The Hornady AMAX stem, in case you guys are wondering, this is the Hornady AMAX stem. The part number on this is 397106. If you want to look a little bit closer, you can also look that up on Hornady's website. The other stem that we're going to look at is the ELDX 143 grain stem. Hornady part number 397130. This is specifically for the 143 and 147 match load. And if in case you guys were not aware, obviously the Hornady seating stems are only for the Hornady seating die. Frankly, I bought those because I've done what I'll call quite a bit of load development, the 143 grain ELDX without much luck. So I was really hoping buying that seating stem was going to improve it. I do think it made a slight improvement. However, we're going to keep going. I don't know if it's worth rating. You guys can kind of judge these for yourselves. I'm, I'm just going to root for you guys right up front as you look at these with the lead die sets. I'm just going to say all of projectiles that I have are somewhat of a VLD style and therefore actually most of them bottom out in the Lee seating stem. I'll ruin this whole video right here for you if you guys are looking at the Lee set. I really highly recommend that you look at something else. I'm not going to tell you that the, the entire die set is not going to do what you want it to do. In fact, the factory crimp die, especially for hunting rounds, I thoroughly recommend. There are a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, that are really like the collet die from that die set. I haven't tested it yet on this channel. It is upcoming, you Lee fans. Just be patient. Right now, primarily, I use the Hornady to do my full-length brass resizing. So as we go down the line here, guys, we're going to start with the Burger 130 grain VLD hunting, part number 26503. For the 130 grain VLD target, part number 26403. For the 103 grain open tip match tactical, part number 26195. For the 135 grain classic hunter, Part number 26571. 
As you go through these, the 140 grain hybrid target, 26414 is the part number. Getting now into the Hornady projectiles, the 100 grain ELD match, 26100 is the part number. 120 grain A match, part number 26172. For the 123 grain A max, part number 26171. For the 123 grain ELD match, part number 26176. For the 130 grain ELD match, part number 26177. For the 140 grain ELD match, part number 26331. The 140 grain AMAX, part number 26302. For the 143 grain ELDX, part number 2635. For the 147 grain ELD match, part number 26333. Moving on to a new brand, the Lapua 139 grain Sonars, part number 4PL6018. Moving on to another brand here, the Nosler 140 grain RDF, part number 49824. Now the other Nosler we have, the 140 grain Acubond Long Range, part number 58922. Moving on to Sierra, the Sierra 123 grain SMKs, part number 1727. Okay guys, last but not least, but only in alphabetical order here, in the Sierra 142 grain Sierra Match King Hollow Point Boat Tail, part number 1742. I just thought I would do basically a public service announcement. If you guys are just getting a 6.5 Creedmoor and you guys have kind of selected the projectiles you wanted to use, if those are going to cover them, I thought that would give you a good idea picking the seating stem. To give the five second conclusion, I couldn't find anything in my entire selection that I don't think the Forester could do very, very well. For those of you guys that aren't real familiar, the Hornady die actually does, takes in the end of the brass and tries to line up the projectile on the brass before it actually hits the seating stem when you're seating the projectile. However, I will show a photo on the screen there. There is a little bit of slop when it comes to the projectile on there. It can wiggle around. It does not hold it perfectly tight. Moving right down the line, guys, this is the Lee seating stem. It's a little bit different, but again, I'll show you a photo on the screen just so you have an idea of how straight that, that projectile is being held when the bullet is being seated. Now guys, last but certainly not least, I will show you the Forester. Now if you guys are unfamiliar with the Forester die, let me know. I can do a breakdown video and post that as well. This 6.5 Creedmoor Forester die works exactly like all the rest of the Forester dies. Basically, your entire brass fits up into here along with your projectile. Everything is basically held in perfect alignment before the seating process even starts. The photo on the screen is going to give you a shot showing the amount of free space that with the projectile inside the stem. And that is not an optical illusion. I could not actually see any daylight around the seating stem was held by the projectile. This die does a wonderful job of keeping that projectile as straight as possible. Frankly, guys, I'm very impressed. If you've been on the channel a while, you'll know that I have a lot more dies, but this is my first Forrester seating die. I've heard a lot of good things about Forrester seating stems, and I'm very excited to try it out. If you're new to the 6.5 Creedmoor game and you're trying to select what die sets you should have, or if you're going to buy multiple die sets, however you're going to do it, give you a little bit of information when it comes to seating stem. If you're going to buy separate dies, I certainly recommend choosing the Ultra Micrometer Seating Die by Forrester. So far, I'm very impressed. I will say, it, I believe it to be very similar to the Redding design. I do not have a Redding die to compare it to. The reason I honestly picked Forrester over Redding in this particular case, number one, the price was certainly better than the Redding seating die by itself. And number two, Redding actually specifies that if you use a compressed load, that it voids the warranty on the seating die. From what I understand, that is not the case with Forrester. I certainly wouldn't recommend having a, a extremely compressed load. There are a couple of loads I run that have a slight amount of compression. And I did not want to be disappointed by the Redding die if, if the Redding die was not going to stand up to the compressed loads at all. Among other things, I'm really hoping this is going to shrink my groups a little bit and certainly improve the concentricity on my reloads. However, that is yet to be seen. So guys, tell me what you guys think in the comments section. What are you guys using? What have you guys found to be the best one? Thank you guys for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified when I post new videos. Until next week, guys, stay safe in small groups.